Welcome to the webinar. Uh, today's the webinar topic is on dynamic loadings on bridges and building. Before getting into the webinar, uh, let me introduce myself. I am basically a bridge engineer practicing for more than 12 years and I have my master's in structural engineering. Okay, let us get into the topic. As you, as you all looking into the topic, uh, you may think I'm going to explain the dynamic behavior of a bridge or building with some complex formulas those things no i am not going to uh, do like that i'm just going to share my knowledge on present current industry practice how they are computing their dynamic loads and how they are using that loads to design a structural element these are the contents for today's webinar first let me introduce uh, do some introduction on what are the dynamic loads which i am going to talk about here then i will uh, share some why the dynamic analysis is required then how the dynamic loads are estimated both seismic and impact loads then i will share you so how the current industry practice and followed by the career path and job or opportunities introduction here i am going to talk about bridges and buildings where uh, in bridges the two dynamic loads will be subjected the first one is seismic force which is due to the ground movement. The second one is due to the impact load, due to the moving loads, because the bridge is usually subjected to the moving loads uh, due to the vehicles. So due to that, the impact load will be there. If you see the images shown below, both the bridges, the left side is the bridge, is like a, a deck will supported over two pier or two column. If you see the left side image, and the right side is the building one, both will be subjected to seismic force that is due to the ground movement. When it, the ground moves, the structure due to the gravity load, it will restrain so that a horizontal force will be acted on the structure. This is seismic force. I think uh, all of you are aware of it. Same, same in the building also. But in case of the impact load due to the moving load, if you see the orange color, this is the static position of the wheel load. Due to the static position, the beam or a, a deck will deform. But when the load moves, due to the moving, there will be an additional impact load will be created. Due to that, that the beam will deform much. So that the deformation is much means the beam will be subjected to additional bending shear. So those things we need to consider in our design. So these are the things we are going to talk about here. Then let us see why a dynamic analysis is required. First, let us classify like two things. One is the impact load, which is due to the moving load. The second one is seismic load. So first I'll share you why the dynamic analysis required for computing the impact load. In case of a bridge, consider a bridge, as I mentioned earlier, when the wheels are in static position, the beam will deflect with some bending moment shear and stresses in the extreme fiber will be something like this shown here. Sorry, something like this shown here. But when the vehicle moves, the beam will be subjected to additional deformation due to the impact loads and some additional reaction bending stresses in the extreme fiber so that we need to compute and we need to design the structure structural element for that one this is why the dynamic behavior is important and this we need to compute in our design so that the structure element will not fail the next one is seismic force here we are going to i'm going to share you about why the seismic force is required uh, the car should be considered in in a design let us take two towers the left side is a tower with only gravity load the right side the tower with gravity load and a horizontal force which is created due to seismic force due to the ground movement we see uh, only due to the gravity load the stresses in the extreme fiber of this tower pier will be fy and fcu maybe maybe a certain value but when it is subjected to a horizontal force, there will be some additional bending, those things will be happening. Even though the, the intensity of the horizontal load is less when compared to the vertical gravity load, but this horizontal load case will govern the, our design. So it is very, very important to consider a member by satisfying all this seismic force, impact force. Now let us see how uh, we are estimating the impact load for bridges. Uh, what, what usually we will do is uh, the impact load, how we will do is uh, provision of impact action shall be made by an increment of vehicle load by a percentage of static vehicle load. 
what we will do is we will just increase the vehicle load static vehicle load by some percentage in order to uh, in order to contribute for the impact impact this one so in case of a bridge there are two types of bridges as you all know the bridge is used for crossing any river or any ob obstruction at the grade so we will propose a bridge there so the bridge will carry both both traffic highway traffic like vehicle car bus trucks those things the second one is like rail bridges rail bridges is like uh, metro rails normal railway bridges uh, high speed trains those things for impact load for finding impact load for highway bridges it is straight straightforward we need to only consider find the impact load in the impact load and we need to apply it in our analysis and design the structure for it but in case of railway bridge there is an, another component addition to the impact load that is deck acceleration why, why we want to consider the deck acceleration is because the rail bridge is running over a track the rail track so the rail track since it is running over the rail track the, the, the rail will be uh, when it is move running it will be subjected to some vibration deck vibration due to the due to this impact load and uh, the passenger inside should be uh, comfort because they should not be subjected to this vibration so there is a limit in the code so that the deck acceleration should be limited to that value so that uh, the passenger inside can uh, have a spa comfort journey and one more thing since the rail is running on the track so in any case it should not dislodge from the track so also the deck, deck should not accelerate much so that uh, the train may dislodge from the track so this this also may need to be viewed now uh, let us see how the highway bridge the impact load has been computed High, highway load the impact factor may be based on these parameters the left side shown is class a class b class AA, class 70 or as the vehicle types. Based on the vehicle type, the impact factor varies. The other component is span of the bridge. Based on the span of the bridge, the impact factor varies. And based on the material of the bridge, this material is mainly the superstructure material. Based on the material change, the impact factor varies. Okay. For a highway bridge, you, you might have seen there are many types of vehicles at present in the current market. But we cannot design for all those types of vehicles our bridge. So what the code, code has been given is they have provided some four types of vehicle which will give a governing result for all these kinds of vehicle. So if you design our bridge for these four types of vehicle, then our bridge will satisfy for the impact factor for all these kinds of flows. For this webinar, I am just focusing on the Indian code. If you see here, I am following IRC 006. 2017 as a reference uh, in this code these four types of vehicles are being specified but this is indian code the different national code has different sets of uh, vehicle types so for example like uh, uk british standard they have different different types of vehicle hca hp those things euro code they have different type uh, astro code american code they have different types so for this webinar i'm just focusing only on the indian code okay these are the four vehicle types then if you see this one this one will give the impact factor the impact factor as i mentioned earlier it, it varies based on the vehicle type the second one is span the third one is uh, material type so if you see this graph here it shows for class a and class b if you go to the earlier slide it shows four types of vehicle for class a or class b class a or class 70 so for class a and class b this is the graph. The vehicle configuration is like that. The right hand side, if you see, class A is the wheel configuration is like this, and class B, the wheel configuration is like this. And for those two things, the impact factor magenta color shows the curve for steel bridges, and blue color shows the curve for concrete bridges. So, based on the span, we can find what is the impact factor percentage. So, if you see, if the span is less, the impact factor is very high. And the span goes, when span is higher, the impact factor reduces. That is because if you see this one, you consider two columns of same dimension, the diameter circular column with the diameter D, but the height of column is different. And apply a horizontal force at the top of the column, P1 or P1, same, same for both columns. But since the height is different, both column stiffness is different. So the shorter column will be more rigid and attract more force so 
the bending will be higher in the shorter column. But in case of longer column, the stiffness is less, less force. So that is the same reason why here small span has higher impact factor and larger span has smaller impact factor. So this is the main difference. Now this, this graph shows for class A and class B vehicle. The next one shows for class A, A and class 70R. Here they are classified like this. This is the right side, this one is the wheel configuration. Class 70R, this is the wheel configuration. And the bottom one shows class AA wheel configuration. So here they classified as for span less than 9 meter for tracked vehicle, it is 25% for span up to 5 meter. When it and linearly varying by 10% for span up to 9 meter. And for wheeled vehicle, it is 25%. Something like this they classified. And for RCC bridge and steel bridge, it is like this. So for in, the, in this class 70 also, they have a wheeled one and tracked one. So both the wheel configuration is different. So based on this, we can compute the impact factor. This is how we will find the impact factor for highway bridge. Now let us see how uh, the dynamic factor has been computed for a railway bridge. For a railway bridge, it is not straightforward. We will perform a dynamic analysis in order to get both the impact factor and as I mentioned earlier, the deck acceleration. The deck acceleration also we will found based on the dynamic analysis. Now, you may think why for a highway bridge, it is a straightforward. We are just referring to some graph and we are getting the impact factor and we are considering that one in our analysis and design development. But in case of railway bridge, we need to perform an additional analysis like the dynamic analysis and then we need to get the dynamic factor and then we need to go for the other process. Because railway bridge is running on the track and it is subject to these three major behavior. The first one is the brutal entry of train on the bridge creates a free vibration resulting from the inertia of the span that cannot instantly accelerate to the deflection corresponding to the position of force. Because the train is moving and the deflection cannot match with the position of the vehicle. So the, the deck will be oscillating. So for, this is the main cause, the first one. And the second point is at high speed they regularly axled because in case of a highway bridge the the axle is not regularly regularly spaced but in case of a, a train or a high speed anything the axle means the wheel the wheel position the wheel positions are regularly spaced so this will excite and may match with the natural frequency of the bridge as you know if the match if it match with the natural frequency the resonance effect will create so this one we need to avoid so for this also, we need to perform a dynamic analysis. The third one is track irregularity creates additional dynamic effect. Because if you see, when, when we are designing, we may consider the track is laid perfectly without any, any deviation in it. But practically, it is not possible. They may have some tolerance in construction. So there may be any, may, may a certain irregularity in the track position. So that one may create additional impact factor. So that one also, we can compute through dynamic analysis thus the euro code what euro code suggests is because here i cannot refer to an indian code because the indian code does not give any speculations or specifications how to perform a dynamic analysis so i am referring to euro code the method is similar i am not going to uh, go in very detail to the loadings of those things i am going to share you about how the process is going to be done so what they are mentioning is when the speed is less than 200 kilometer the dynamic analysis is not required they are given like a straight straight away formula to compute the factor. But if the speed is more than 200 km per hour, they ask us to perform a dynamic analysis to find the impact factor and deck acceleration. Then the next one, the principal factors which influences dynamic behavior. When these, these are all the variables, let me say that, uh, put it this way. These are all the variables. When it varies, the dynamic factor and deck acceleration varies. The first one, the speed. As the speed increases, the, the, the dynamic behavior, dynamic factor will increase actually. When the span increases, as I, as I shown earlier in the graph, it, it plays a major role. It, the dynamic factor varies. Then the mass, then the natural frequency of the whole structure, the axial, axial configuration, maybe the axial load, the wheel load. If the wheel load varies, dynamic factor varies. As if the spacing of the each wheel varies, the dynamic load varies. Then the damping of structure. When the da dampness of structure for RC, the dampness is less, uh, the steel, the dampness is more. So based on that also, 
the dynamic factor varies. Then the vehicle configuration, the vehicle imperfection, those things contribute. If you see the right right side of the table, they, this will give you a better picture. If you see the bridge parameter, the first column is the bridge parameter. The second one is the resonance speed. And third one is the maximum acceleration. What they are mentioning is uh, if the damping increases, damping of the bridge increases, there will be no effect in resonance. But the deck acceleration decreases. If the damping increases, deck acceleration may decrease. The second case is if the mass of the bridge increases, the resonance will decrease with square root of m. But and at the same time, the maximum acceleration also decreases. The third parameter, the stiffness of the bridge. If the stiffness of parameter increases, of the bridge increases, the resonance will increase with the square root of the stiffness. And the maximum declaration, there is no effect. Fourth one is the product of mass and stiffness. Both, if it increases, the resonance will have no effect. But the deck acceleration decreases. This is like a general overview. Because when we perform a analysis, uh, getting the value from a software or something, we need to know whether the whatever the input is correct or whether the output is correct or not. So based on this, we can we can find by doing some trial and error or something, we can we can get an idea whether the output coming from a software is correct or not.